Yeah. The thing about Taco Bell is, though is when you go there, you can get anything you want, and it's all like a dollar, and you can get as much, and you make the combos. But yeah, I, I do miss a lot of it. But it's okay. I mean, you can spice up bean burritos and you tostadas and all that stuff. I do. I have one kitty. Uh, my kitty does not have a name because cats do not give themselves names. She's super cute, but she's a total butthead. She's like probably, I don't know, maybe like a teen right now. So anytime I walk, it's just like, Rah! I'm like, ah, oh, weak, what do you want? I remember being a little kid and people were like, oh, there's a little Lutheran boy. Like, or when I was in high school, people, I remember I met a dude and like instantly got judged because I had a cross on and after that, he like had a bad opinion of me. And then throughout high school, it was yeah, pretty much the same thing. Anytime, even up until now, if you ever tell anybody you're Christian, they, it seems like they immediate, immediately discredit what you're gonna say anything about faith or God or whatever because there's already a, a a stereotype out there for Christians. So I'd say, you know, from when you're a kid to when you're an adult, you're always going to go through it. You just got to learn to, you know, accept it and try to open people's eyes and mind. Let me see. Let me see. I started dancing. Now that I'm married, I went to a couple clubs and just danced. Not like I had to dance or oh, I'm going to feel like a jerk because I'm not dancing with my wife. It's like, no, I. You know, I was at a place I didn't really enjoy, but I was there because it's, you know, I was with my wife and with my best friend. I was like, I'm gonna try this out, I'm gonna enjoy it. Tried dancing, probably horrible at it, but absolutely enjoyed it. To me, that's the merry thing I started doing, is dancing. I am working on it. I will give it everything I can. But if I don't, please, please don't go online and bash me. You know, I'm working on it, guys. You know, I'm trying to reform violence. I've been trying that for days. I'm trying to reincarnate the Beatles. I've been, I've been working on that. You know, we, my, my company figured out the holographic Tupac. We, we tried it somewhere else, but you know, it wasn't what the people wanted as, as in regards to the Beatles. So, how it changed from, from my perspective is when I was a kid, when I was younger, I was playing in this thrash band, it was super tight. And now that I'm 26, I play in this progressively powerful, instrumental, artistic explosion of musicians. So it's kind of like, okay, well, what, what is my role in the band? I'm the vocalist, which means I'm supposed to, you know, deliver. I'm, I'm a singer, I'm a songwriter. And I think both of those have stepped up in a different direction from Strike Force. Yeah, it was tight. One time they were they were doing a tour, I want to say with like War or something, or just like this badass tour. They needed cabs and I just so happened to be right in front of my computer in the MySpace days where they posted a bulletin. And I was like, yeah, dude, I got one. Instantly, Ryan, he got my number and he called me and I'm not gonna lie, dude, I was like, no way. I got like hella fanboy on it, dude. And I had a my Marshall slanted A cab, 1960. It was Municipal Way, so I spray painted our logo on it just so like people would see it. And then we dropped it off and he was like, yeah, drop it off in Oakland right here at this house. I'm like, wait a second, dude, this sounds kind of shady. Garage door opens up and Scotty Karate. And it was all great. Oh yeah, they said that every time they transported or moved it, I mean, just what you do on tour, load and unload, they said they got green paint all over them. Like every night, green paint on them. I felt pretty bad, but yeah, we spray painted our logo in green on there. Gay marriage was just recently legalized, so gay divorce has not been legalized yet. So we're technically just separated. I like to use that term. We just live two different lives, you know. I love, you know, my rock and roll party thrash, and he loved his epic, brutal, amazing thrash, you know. So that's that's why it went like this. That's why you don't have the age of war, our fog of holocaust. You have zombie holocaust, the fog of war, and I think for the future of metal, it's actually better this way because if Dave Mustaine and James Hitfield didn't get divorced or separated in the 80s, you wouldn't have Megadeth and you wouldn't have Metallica.